It's better than nothing. Johnny Andrews is a third generation farmer in California's Central Valley. My grandpa came out of Texas and he told me years ago, he said, you know, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. See how it's changing colors? Andrews is one of thousands of farmers in the state struggling to keep their crops green during a record drought. And it's lifting the water. He is turning to what he calls a last resort, drilling for groundwater. You're looking at $200,000 to drill a well. You're looking at the pumping cost every month of about between $2,500 and $3,500 per well. Farmers like Andrews use about 80% of the state's developed water, growing everything from tomatoes to almonds. With the drought in its fourth year, farmers are drilling deeper and deeper, yeah, running pumps the, you know, day and night. These are just running all the time and burning diesel. Yeah, they're running all the time. They're burning four gallons an hour. All that pumping has consequences. As the groundwater gets drawn up, the land sinks down. Scientists call it subsidence. These fields in California's Central Valley have been sinking by more than one foot per year. That means that about five years ago, these fields would have been above my head. No one knows exactly how much water is being pumped, but hydrologist Michelle Sneed is alarmed by how quickly the ground is sinking. I've been studying land subsidence uh, throughout the West for 20 years, and I've never measured rates like this before. Over the past two decades, the ground in one area has sunk from Sneed's head to her feet. According to NASA, some parts of the Central Valley are now sinking more than two inches a month. We saw that the area being affected by subsidence was enormous, stretching all the way from I-5 to 99, about 1,200 square miles were being affected by subsidence. That's an area the size of Rhode Island, and it has sunk permanently. How do you stop those areas from sinking? Well, the, the scientific solution is really easy. Uh, you stop lowering groundwater levels. Uh, putting that into practice is a whole other ball of wax. Farmers would have to cut back on drilling for water. The center of it is down south of here. But Sneed's colleague, Claudia Font, took me to see some of the damages subsidence has already caused. I mean, what do we got going on here? And I mean, it's really buckling. Yeah, and a few years ago when I was here, it wasn't nearly this bent, so it's showing evidence of continuing to warp even more. These canals deliver water to farms and cities throughout Southern California, including Los Angeles. And this isn't the only one I see. I mean, I see it here, mm -hmm. I see it right down there, and I see a third one. Yeah, and there's another one up that direction as well. So this can be happening to the bridges, to the roadways, to the railroads. Correct. In fact, there's a bridge right down the road from here that the water level is now coming up over the base of the road because that area has sunk. When I went to see the bridge, the flood risk was clear. The water level has risen up so high now that it would go right over the surface of the road if they hadn't built these retaining walls to keep it back. Problems like these are already costing taxpayers tens of millions of dollars. And subsidence is also damaging a vital part of California's flood control system. Yeah, this, so the levees through here are about five to six feet lower than they were uh, historically. This is a Chris White runs the Central California Irrigation District. He says subsidence is weakening levees. This area, we've always had flood challenges through here. But with this subsidence that's occurred, it's going to be even more challenging to deal with floods in the future. To the west of it Forecasters are predicting a record El Nino this winter. The wet weather pattern could bring heavy rains to this region. Red on this map is bad. White showed me areas most at risk of flooding. There's a school, there's an elementary school there. Highway 152 crosses right through the area. Uh, there is significant farmland assets. I'm praying for rain regardless, but it's a high risk situation from a flood control standpoint. Nearly half the nation's fruits, vegetables, and nuts are produced in California. To find out what the state is doing to protect its vital farmland, I met with Janine Jones of the Governor's Drought Task Force. Subsidence is not regulated historically under California law. No one is responsible for it. But certainly the state doesn't even know how big the subsidence problem is. We're not even monitoring all of the subsidence? There has, no, there has not been funding or programs because there has been no statutory responsibility or requirement to do so. Last year, California lawmakers passed legislation to manage groundwater, but it won't require regulators to limit pumping for another 25 years. Until then, the sinking will likely continue. 
The independent nonprofit California Water Foundation has estimated that damage due to subsidence across the state could cost taxpayers billions of dollars to fix. Do you think a billion dollars is a high estimate for what the total costs will be or a low estimate? I really don't have anything to, to judge it by, I just don't have the data. For some farmers, drilling for water has provided a lifeline during the drought. But the long-term consequences of that drilling are becoming clearer. If we do have a wet year, As large swaths of the state continue to sink, the risk of flooding increases. And people like Johnny Andrews, whose farms have survived four dry years, are now worried they could be wiped out by the rain the state desperately needs. We're talking about the state and feeding the people in the state. If that flood is bad enough, it'll wipe out the next year's farming, or a lot of it.